Hey everyone, this is Nicole Pascal with Toe Pass. Thanks so much for joining me here today for Quick Tip Thursday. Today we're going to be talking about line and ink drawings using Toe Pass Simplify. If you have any questions, you can type them into your questions module on your GoToWebinar panel. Ashley Robinson, our product manager, is going to be answering those during the presentation. And then I'll answer a few after the presentation as well. If you're having any trouble with your screen freezing up, usually minimizing and maximizing that window will solve the issue. If it doesn't, you can log off and log back in after you've shut down other programs that might be running on your computer. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Topaz Simplify is known for all different types of unique digital art, um, from creating painterly effects, uh, a lot of people like to use Simplify for photo painting. It's also a great program just to eliminate things in your photographs that, that might not be necessary, a little bit of dust here or there, um, little specks of something or an, another in water perhaps. It's very simple to extract that. Another interesting art, digital art that it can help create it are these line drawings. So. Um, let's go ahead and I'll show you a couple before and afters. Let's see here. Kind of show you my process and then we'll go through it. So this was the original image. I then popped the image into Topaz Adjust just to bring out some color real quick in all areas of the image. I then took it in and created this really nice um, or what I thought to be very nice uh, line and ink type of look, uh, but I was missing the eye, and that's one thing you really want to pay attention to when you're working with um, Topaz Simplify. If you can keep the lines within the eye like I was able to do on the right, that is best. Otherwise, you're going to have to go in and draw it in yourself. That's, that's what I did here. Um, it it's, could be better. <laughs> so... Um, but that is what I had to do. I also really enjoyed just the lines, which you're able to process within Topaz Simplify as well. You can process just the base or the lines themselves. Let me show you a few others real quick. Uh, this is an image. Let me disable this layer mask. Okay, this was the original image here. I again popped it into Topaz Adjust, put a little specify uh, filter on there, and took the adaptive color way up. I really like to take a colorful image into Simplify if possible, so it has a lot of that color to work with right off the bat. This is what I came up with. I was kind of looking for a cartoon type of feel. I was able to get this very quickly, but what I was missing was the shadow area because I brightened everything up so much it took all of my blacks if you'll recall here's the original image with the shadow below the car the blacks of the of the door and the shadows it really just popped those back up and made them this green color which isn't very exciting for me so what I did is I just took the this image back into Simplify, was able to darken it up, get that shadow region, and then use a layer mask to get those shadows back in. Now this was done very quickly, so it's a little messy, but you get the idea. So you can easily process two images and, and get exactly what you're looking for. Um, this was a fun image here, a very um, light line, a lot of ink effect, the original image was here. I just um, took that into Topaz just to get a little color pop, took it into Remask and actually cut out my dad and daughter. And then I went ahead and took another image to get my background into Topaz Simplify, brought a shadow of them in, created that shadow, created them, or popped them back in, worked with them a little bit more and was able to come up with this rather quickly. So we can go over this in just a bit. I do want to show you one more and then we'll go in. 
Oh, actually, I haven't done. We'll do that one together if, if we want to. So let's go ahead and start with our portrait here. I had a question recently on Facebook that asked about line and ink drawings um, on portraits and how it's really hard to get exactly what um, he wanted. So I want to go over this first and make sure that we cover it. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all of my background or all of my other layers and just start with my background. So here's the original image. Here's my process. I made a copy of my image. You can do so by dragging it down in your layers palette. You can also press Control or Command J depending on if you're a Mac or PC. I'm just going to pop it into Topaz Adjust and the reason I do this is I want to bring out as much color as possible. That's kind of crazy. Um, I believe what I did here was color blast and then took it down just a little bit. Take down that adaptive saturation and just work with the regular saturation. Okay, so it's pretty simple before, after. I'm pressing OK just to process it back. Now I'm going to make another back or another copy of my adjusted layer that we just did. I didn't rename them just because we're going pretty quick for this uh, quick tips so but it's better to name them as you go along as you go through your workflow now I'm gonna take this into Topaz Simplify and I'm going to reset all to go ahead and start from the very beginning now what I want to get from this image is a line drawing and then a little bit of a watercolor a little bit of color seeping through but not really um, dramatic color not really obvious color like this just a little hint of color very opaque so the first thing that I want to do in simplify is come to my mode I'm just gonna work with my edges to start off with so I'm just gonna click on my edges if you go to reset all your edges aren't there at all so now I'm just gonna open my edges tab and take my edge strength the first thing I'm gonna do is just take that up pretty high and see what I have so right now my edge type is color edge normal. You have multiple color or edge types within here, but I want to do kind of a black line drawing. And so I can work with my mono edge, normal or fine. This is going to give me an edge type of effect. You're going to have all different types of sizes of lines. I don't know if that makes sense. Looks more like a sketch. A lot of um, a lot of texture going on within the face still within the hat if you come down here to your mono edge or mono line normal you'll notice that all of the lines are now the same size they might be different in tone but they're all the same size and that's kinda of what I'm looking for here so I'm going to pump this edge strength up again and now I'm going to fatten my edges and you'll start to see certain edges will pop out more than others so I'm going to kind of come out a little bit okay, now that I have a pretty strong edged image there's all this texture going on that I don't want especially in the face I can barely see his face I really want the beard to stand out and like I said before those eyes are really important and I really want to clean up this hand so what I can do you can there's this simplify edge slider underneath edge strength that works very similar to the actual simplify slider up in the simplify tab what it's going to do as you push it up it will start to take away the uh, smaller and weaker edges within the image so since we're only dealing with edges right now you'll start to see that occur okay now we also have this reduce weak and reduce small this gives you even more control over of taking away those smaller or weaker edges note that when you're in your mono line whether it's normal or fine the reduce small becomes non-existent okay so I'm just gonna take that down because it doesn't matter it but it does work very well when you're in your edges now I'm going to reduce the weak okay so just moving that a little took out all of that texture all of that um, 
what you might call a sketch type of feel. So now I'm going to play with my simplify edge and bring in certain elements. Okay. And I can take out with my reduced weak or bring back in. It's really up to you and what you're looking for in your image. But the important thing to remember is that you have a lot of control within playing with these two sliders. Okay, so once you're happy with your um, line drawing, and I'm almost getting there. <laughs> okay, I'm pretty happy here. I'm going to move on, but what I do notice right away is that I'm missing the pupil of the eye to stand out like I have over here on the right, so that bothers me quite a bit, and I'll fix that within Photoshop or whatever host program you have. You can go in and paint that. So let's now bring in some of our color. The first thing I'm going to have to do is come up to Combined or Base. Base if you just want to look at the color and not the edges. Combined if you want to look at both, and I would rather look at both. So I'm going to say Combined, and all of my original color image is going to come back because we haven't done anything within Simplify or Adjust. So I'm going to come over to um, my Simplify first, my Simplify tab, and I'm going to take out all of my details. I don't want any details in there. And I'm just going to take my Simplify size up pretty big. Okay, So right away you start to get that cartoon-like feel as you take out all of that texture and all of that detail and all of those image features. If you crank up your feature boost, you'll start to get very unique feel, but it does change the image quite a bit, especially when you're in RGB color space. Um, so that's something to play around with if you'd like. I'm not going to within this. I'm pretty much done. Once I've simplified everything, I'm done. I want to come into my Adjust tab now, and I'm going to brighten things up. I'm going to take my contrast down because I want everything to be kind of muted and opaque. So I don't want a lot of craziness going on. Again, I'm going to take my brightness up just a little bit. And what I'm looking for here is um, also the color, the eye color. I'd like to keep that. So I'm going to actually go back to my Simplify and drag that down until I get that back in. There we go. Now I'm going to take down my saturation just a bit and even take down my saturation boost. So here's before, here's after. You really have the opportunity to play around with bringing these colors back in or not. As you brighten though, you're going to lose some of the, the shadowy area. So that's something to keep in mind. You can take that brightness down and, and bring back a little bit of color. However, for this, I wanted it to be pretty opaque, so there we are. I'm going to press OK, process that back, and that's our first line and cartoon drawing. The, again, the important thing to remember are just a few sliders. In the Simplify tab, the Simplify size slider is really important. All the detail sliders need to be down at zero. The adjust tab, which we were just working on, handles all the color and the saturation. And so that's important when you're wanting to get more of a watercolor type of effect or any sort of muted effect. Playing with that brightness and contrast will really help there. And then the edges, of course, to really get exactly what you're looking for. So that was a pretty simple process. I do want to show you one thing before you go, and I'll answer some questions for everybody who wants to stick around. Let's jump into this particular image, and I'm going to get rid of everything, because I want to show you how easy it really is to get that line and ink drawing within Simplify. Again, first I'm going to just come over here to adjust. I want it to be really colorful going into um, going directly into Simplify. So I'm just going to take my Adaptive Saturation, really crank that up. Then I'm going to take my Overall Saturation, just get everything going. And I have 
a lot of my shadow area exposed now since I'm using that adaptive exposure so I'm just going to press OK. Very quick process. You don't have to do this but it's great to get some colorful whatever program you are using bring out that color before you pop it into simplify it does help especially if you're looking for a cartoon effect which some, I'm trying to do with this particular image so right away whatever I just applied to that image that portrait image we were working on is going to be applied to this particular image as well I'm not it's somewhat what I'm looking for, but not quite. And I know that we have all of these great presets. Most of these are, let's see here, starting from wood carving. These are all um, different presets that we have available for you. And as you come up, you'll see ske sketch light pencil, sketch hard pencil. These are different sketch. That's really great to start off with with your edges, and then you can move from there. We have sketch color if you want to bring in some color. Again, it's a great place to start because you then can come over here and adjust it exactly the way you want. But we also have this cartoon, which is what I was wanting for this particular image. So right away, it, it takes my image into this cartoon-like effect, which I was looking for. And I can do anything else that I want to do. First thing I'm going to do is take down all my detail sliders. I don't want any texture within anything going to take my simplify size up just a little bit get the colors a little bit more plain and less less textured now I'm going to go into my adjust and work with that just a little brighten that up change my contrast and you get the idea of how simple it is to start. You can use these presets to start out on and then come over here and really um, work with it a little bit more however you would like to. If you want to go to a color edge normal or color line fine, you then get these really great color edge effects and that can be a lot of fun as well. I, I'm going to stick with this mono line and fatten up my edges just a bit reduce a few of those weak ones simplify it just a little bit even more and I'm done and I can press OK and move on so let me go ahead and answer some questions coming through for those of you that have to leave thanks for joining me today and I hope to see you this afternoon it's 5 p.m. central time with Scott Stolberg he's going to be talking about some of his travel and stock photography and how to make your images really memorable and pop off the page and how he does that with Topaz so hope to see you there okay Scott said simplify just the eye on a different layer and paint in only the eye that's a great idea Scott um, he was talking about as opposed to drawing it in in Photoshop on um, the eye drawing it in yourself just taking the eye in or just taking the layer back into simplify focusing only on the eye itself and then painting that eye back in and that would probably work much better than just painting it back in great great suggestion uh, Dixie says the three last presets how do you get those Dixie those are actually my personal presets that I've saved um, here just actually in the past couple of hours I try to take them all out before um, these presentations, but those are mine. Uh, you can make yours by easily, so for this particular image, for example, I did spend a while originally trying to get the line effect that I wanted, so now I can just come over here, click on the preset, and now I have that. And this is great for these types of effects if you have a multiple um, a type of effect that you really are attracted to definitely save it the way you can do that is just press save um, you can save the preset name and then it'll be saved back into your preset panel Okay, Becky says, how do you paint the eye back in? And I have uh, quite a few people asking me about the dad and daughter image, so I will get to that in one second. But let's try Scott's suggestion of uh, how he um, said paint the eye back in as opposed to actually painting the eye. Let me show you that method real quick. 
you can easily just make a new layer. So I've just popped a new layer on top of my um, simplify layer. The default to creating new layer is going to be this transparent layer. So you can just paint directly on that and all you need to do is get a black because it is a black mono line, um, a black paintbrush, opacity set to whatever you'd like it to be. I'm going to set mine to about 60 and I'm going to go in on his face and now I can come in and work with that do my own type of do my own type of eye um, but as you can see it is going to take some effort and time and I really like Scott's suggestion I didn't even think about it so even though that's what we did for the car image <laughs> so let's try that one instead but that is one way to paint the eye back in let's take our original adjusted layer back into or Let's make a copy first. Go back into Simplify and focus only on the eye, this eye. Um, let's take our edges first and bring back in the pupil. So I'm going to take my Simplify and come down just a little bit. Again, we're looking at just the pupil and as it comes back, I'm going to take my Reduce Weak Strength down maybe start to get something. Oh, it's not even beginning yet. Let's try. Let's keep on taking that simplify down. Again, we're focusing just on the eye here. We're trying to bring back in that pupil. Woo, finally. Okay, let's work with that. Uh, it's very textured. As you can see, it brought back in a lot of those edges. Let's see if we can reduce the weak just a little without... Okay, that'll be fine. Now we're going to go up to our Simplify. I'm sorry, our Adjust. Bring back in some of the color. Just a little bit. Until we get that blue back that we wanted for his eye. Okay, there it is. Let's brighten that up again. And it's a little difficult to see, but it is blue. Let me saturate that just a little. And I'm just going to press OK and process that back. So now we can paint that eye directly in, and it's going to have the same look as the Simplify um, lines that are already in there. But we'll have to paint it in very carefully. So the way that we're going to do that is with a layer mask. Okay, so here's the image that we just did. Here's the image that we want, and we want to bring in just a little bit of that eye. So what we're going to do is come up to the image that, that we like, that's on top. We're just going to apply a layer mask. The way we do that is come over to Layer, Layer Mask, Reveal All. It's going to give us a white layer mask, and we're just going to paint away this top image so we start to see the image below it. The way we do that is we paint black on this white layer mask. There's several different ways to do layer masks, several different ways to do this. This is just the way that I like to do it. So I'm going to go to, because I need to paint black on this white layer mask, I'm going to make sure that my color is black. I have my brush, my mode, I'm just going to use normal for now. My opacity is 60%, and I'm actually going to take that down just a little. And I'm going to increase the size of my brush. And I'm actually just going to increase it about the size of his pupil, see what happens. All right, Scott, great suggestion. So I just made um, a bunch of clicks on his eye and was able to bring that in quite quickly. And now I'm happier, much happier, with this image. There we are. Okay, so let's take a look at the dad and daughter image. This image had a lot going on. I'm not going to do everything again because of everything it had going on, but I'll show you exactly the workflow and what happened. So here's the original image. The first thing I did was just pop up the color, and actually I don't believe that I used adjust. All I did was an adjustments layer and brought in some shadow, or 
um, a levels adjustment, excuse me, merged the levels adjustment into my background copy and was able to start with this particular image. I then took the image into Remask, did a quick mask, surprisingly quick, it was not um, difficult, so that was good, and was able to cut them out of the scene. Once I had them cut out of the scene, I then um, made a copy of them. I knew what background I wanted to take them into, into this uh, Wormslow Plantation Road background. Some of you might be familiar with me using this image over the past couple webinars. Um, but I thought it was perfect with this particular image. So I brought that in and I took that into Simplify as well. Because I brought it in by using File Place, I was able to um, use it as a smart filter and I can go back into Topaz Simplify and all my settings are there. So I was, it was pretty easy to get this. Cancel this out. Once I did that, I made a copy of my, my uh, dad and daughter and I brought them in to the image and resize them to work with the image. So let's scroll in on them. <clears throat> okay, there were a few things I noticed off the bat. First, that the lighting did not really seem great. It did not go with the scene at all. And I wanted to see if I could improve upon that, so I made another copy of them, of them went back into Simplify, and let me take this opacity to 100% so you see, and made the lines stronger and more cartoonish, so like the background, so I was able to do this. And then the lighting was even worse, so what I did was take this down to about 60%, and then I did a levels adjustment on them, and I clipped it to this particular background or to this particular layer, the last layer of them, to take down the shading a little bit. And I thought that worked a little bit better than just the original because now it looked like a line drawing a little bit more. And then I have a couple people asking about the shadows. All I did was make another copy of them. Let me just do that. It wasn't, it, it might not be the best way to do it. I was just doing it pretty quick. <laughs> so what I did is I just did a copy of my my dad and daughter. I took the one that was below. So let's go here. So now I have this copy of them, okay? And what I did is I did a levels adjustment and a opacity adjustment. Let's see what I had this opacity at. Well, let's just drag this levels adjustment to them. That didn't the way that I create a clipping mask is just go to layer, create clipping mask, and then whatever adjustment I did is now directly changing only the layer that it's clipped to as opposed to all of the rest. Okay, and my original shadow was 18%, so that's what I need to do here as well. So I took my opacity down to 18-ish. Okay, so it starts to look like a shadow. So let me just put that right back on top of them. And I grabbed it by pressing Command or Control T. That allows me to then right click and say distort. And then I just played from there. Oops. I just drug it down, drug all these guys down, put it in about the right spot that I thought it would be with the light direction, and just honestly played around with it until I thought it looked pretty good. Trying to keep in mind the feet and how those work with each other. Something along the lines like that. So I hope that kind of gives you a little bit um, of an idea of how you can create it. Um, this, there's many different ways, honestly, of doing this, and this is probably not the most um, direct way, but that's how.
how I did it. <laughs> Okay, so thanks so much, everybody. Uh, looks like all those questions are answered, so perfect. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you this afternoon. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.